Could you just set up the history and significance of Taiwan? Because I think a lot of people have no idea what it is, where it is, whose it is. I'll try to be brief. Um, so ta Taiwan was uh, Chinese territory until 1895 when China was defeated by Japan in the first Sino-Japanese War. And uh, after, as a result, China ceded the territory of Taiwan to Japan. Then that was reversed after after 50 years of Japanese occupation. That was reversed after the result of World War II because as the uh, as, uh, end of the settlement for World War II, Japan was supposed to give up all the territory outside of its home islands, um, including all the territory has taken from neighboring country before. And, and the problem though, uh, the, the Treaty of San Francisco in 1951 that was supposed to end the war with Japan, United States specifically excluded the country of China and Korea from attending the, the uh, signing of Treaty of San Francisco because the excuse United States government used was, oh, China is in the midst of a civil war, which it was. I mean, uh, um, at the so Taiwan was returned to China after 1945, but then China immediately was involving a civil war between the communists and the KMT side. And the communists eventually won out and the KMT government uh, the previous government in China then fled to Taiwan, where they keep on pretending they're still the sole legitimate government of all of China, which United States went along with that fiction until 1971. And in fact, um, you know, as as Mao was uh, supposed to uh, was about to send the People's Liberation Army across the Taiwan Strait in 1950 to finish the Chinese Civil War. Korean War broke out in, in June 1950. And as a result of the Korean War, before the Chinese intervention in the Korean War, Truman issued a directive to send the U.S. 7th Fleet into the Taiwan Strait. That pre prevented uh, the Chinese uh, People Liberation Army to cross the Taiwan Strait because in 1950, China didn't, uh, the People's Republic of China didn't have a navy. They, they, they could, there's nothing they could do when U.S. sent its aircraft carrier into the Taiwan Strait in 1950. So as a result, the, the, the Chinese Civil War entered into kind of suspended phase. Uh, you know, the, the, the remnant government uh, set up their ramparts on Taiwan. So this is the, the we're, we're dealing with this legacy right now. And 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 the U.S. has always intervened. In fact, Right, some people are calling the current crisis the fourth Taiwan Strait crisis because we already had at least three. And in the first two Taiwan Strait crises in 1954 and 1958, United States government had plans to nuke mainland China. The, 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 this was just this just came out like a couple of years ago. Um, and and the U.S. because at the time it looks like uh, mainland China was about to take a couple offshore islands, not even taking Taiwan, just offshore islands about a few kilometers off the coast of mainland China that was held by Taiwan's uh, KMT party. And at that time, United States had, a uh, Pentagon has a plan if um, if the PLA does cross uh, to take the Kinmen Islands, for example, they would, they would drop nuclear bombs onto mainland China to stop this uh, invasion. Um, but the, but Mao never actually sent PLA over so that the nuke scenario, we, we never saw the nuke scenario, but the plan was in place. And in fact, uh, since 1958, U.S. has placed nuclear tip missiles as well as nuke on Taiwan. And during um, during during the Vietnam War, there are about 30,000 U.S. Uh, military personnel were stationed in Taiwan. This all changed with uh, 1971 visit of Nixon. So Nixon signed the Shanghai communique with, uh, with uh, Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai in Shanghai, which says United States recognize the Taiwan issue. Uh, you know, both sides of the Taiwan Strait uh, agree they're, you know, they're all Chinese and, and, and Taiwan issue is an is a issue to remain to be solved by the Chinese of both sides of the Taiwan Strait. So, so after that, U.S. has pulled out its military and its nukes from Taiwan since 1971. And the Shanghai communique forms a foundation for the Sino-American relation, uh, relation going on forward. Um, what we're seeing right now is U.S. is walking back 
from the Shanghai communique signed by Nixon in 1971. Uh, because since night since US and China has established a relationship in 19 normalized relationship in 1979, ever since uh, U.S. only recognized the government in Beijing as the sole legitimate government of China. Uh, U.S. do not recognize Taiwan. Uh, you know, they have, there's no official U.S. embassy in Taiwan. There's a so-called de facto embassy. They call the American Institute on Taiwan. Um, and what we have seen since the uh, Trump administration, though, there is a creeping uh, kind of uh, U.S., U.S. is trying to, to revert is trying to revert back to the Cold War era situation. Uh, under Trump, U.S. actually sent Marines back into Taiwan under the pretense that the American Institute in Taiwan is sort of U.S. diplomatic uh, 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 institution, which need U.S. Marine to guard it, which is totally unnecessary. But th they're just doing it to see China's reaction. This is a, a series of provocations that U.S. have done to, 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 to provoke China and to increase tension in the area. But in our corporate media, uh, China is the one that's painted as aggressor. But I, I, I want to remind people there, there has been peace across the Taiwan Strait since the late 1980s. Uh, you know, ever since I was born, uh, I, I grew up in China in 1980s. I mean, it's, ever since that time, the, actually, the relationship, uh, the, the tension has cl calmed down. The trade across the both sides have grown. Right now, there are about 2 million Taiwanese uh, people studying, working on mainland China, you know, out of a total population of 20, 25 million. Uh, so, so, I mean, there's a lot of cultural exchange going on. And, and, the, and in 1990, finally, the 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 Taiwanese government lifted the restriction on travel between direct travel between uh, mainland China and Taiwan. Before uh, in 1980, I remember Taiwanese businessmen they have to travel to Hong Kong uh, as a stopping point in order to go to go to mainland China. Uh, but now they can fly directly across the Taiwan Strait. But what U.S. is done, especially with what Pelosi is done, is is not. Um, so the White House spokesperson, John Kirby, has said, oh, China is reacting to a longstanding U.S. policy. That, that's a bald-faced lie because <laughs> there has been no Speaker of House visit to Taiwan for 25 years since last visit was New Gingrich back in 1997. And in fact, the U.S. had Congress had to pass a law in 2018 under Trump administration to allow high level visits called the Taiwan Travel Act to allow high level US official to visit Taiwan. So US has been taking serious of steps to kind of normalize its uh um <laughs> the, the, the client the normalize the status of Taiwan as a US client state basically and and this is what uh China is um voice is our position against. And that's why they raise a big concern about uh, the Pelosi visit, because, uh, you know, it's true that back in the 50s, Eisenhower, Nixon, they all visited um, Taiwan. But that's that's back in the day when U.S. was uh, under this pretense that the government in Taipei is a sole legitimate government of China. Since 1979, since the normalization of ties between China and U.S., uh, you know, no U.S. presidents have visited Taiwan. And the Speaker of the House is second in line to, well, Pelosi is second in line to succeed Biden in case something happened to both Biden and Kamala Harris. So she's pretty high up there. And she is going there not as a private citizen. She's representing the U.S. government. She's traveling on a U.S. Air Force plane, C-40C. Uh, you know, it's uh, normally a congressman travel to Taiwan previously have been traveling on commercial airliner or private jet. Uh, 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 but but Nancy Pelosi is traveling on a U.S. Air Force asset. So this is this is quite, quite different. And, and it's uh, it, it's in a, on, on a symbolic level, at least. And, and you know, Chinese understood this. Um, you know, I don't know how many American audience understood it because we're swamped by by kind of disinformation and propaganda over here.